Let's talk to Professor Anthony Glees, who's Director of the Centre for Security and Intelligence Studies, University of Buckingham, because we've had another fascinating week, another deadly week uh, in the Middle East. We've watched uh, with quite incredulity, I suppose you would say, uh, uh, how Israeli intelligence has picked apart Hezbollah uh, in the way that they have. They First they started blowing up their pages, then they started blowing up uh, their walkie-talkies. Um, who knows what they're going to blow up next? But basically, uh, the Lebanese and Hezbollah are saying that they are going to wreak an ex exceedingly horrible revenge on Israel as a result. The doomsday book will be thrown at them, literally. Professor Anthony, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. So it's been an incredible week, hasn't it? I mean, I don't know how surprised you were, but when that story first broke about the exploding pages, I was kind of like, what? What have they done? Incredible, incredibly audacious move, wasn't it? Absolutely. Audacious James Bond. I mean, this was straight out of cue. And it, it's very interesting to compare what has been a successful uh, intelligence-led attack on Hezbollah in the north with the desperate intelligence failure in respect of Gaza in the south. It shows the Israelis are not good at traditional intelligence gathering, mm. but it, when it comes to cyber uh, work, they are second to none in the world, and that is because of the training the Israeli Defence Force gives its its brightest graduates. They're very good at this stuff. Right. And yes, it was a huge and massive surprise. Most importantly, I think it was a huge and massive surprise to Hezbollah. And of course, again, unlike the attacks in Gaza, these attacks were uh, essentially uh, targeted because by definition, the mm. people who had these devices were members of Hezbollah. Right, so, including, yes, including three, rather... 3,000 fighters were killed. Right including, rather unsurprisingly, um, the Iranian ambassador. Yes. Well, anybody got uh, caught up in this, apart from the, the very sad um, deaths of, of children and women, but the most of the 3,000 people who've been killed over the two days were, by definition, Hezbollah yeah. terrorists. Well, and I mean, to be honest... different from Gaza. To be honest, you wouldn't necessarily rule out the possibility of some of the women and children being in Hezbollah as well, and I mean some of the older children. Well, it's possible, but I think if you're a fighter, you live by the sword and you die right. by the sword. And I think the world thinks differently about what's happening in Lebanon from what happened and is happening and going on in Gaza. Mm. So in Lebanon, this is a war that Netanyahu can win. And I suspect, you know, we've had 100 Israeli airstrikes in the night. I suspect the Israelis are gearing up to go in, maybe in the next few hours, and push, try to push, let us say, destroy Hezbollah in uh, the southern Yes, a bit of Lebanon. because they must have been severely denuded in terms of the way that they can communicate, because now not only did they do the one thing one day with the pages, but they did day two, mark two, they did all the walkie-talkies, which was even more extraordinary, really. Um, but there's another uh, story, I don't know whether you've seen this, in The Sun today, um, about how there was a plot apparently to murder um, Benjamin Netanyahu from um, an, an Iranian bloke um, who apparently is, is, is named Moti Maman. He was arrested last month after being recruited by Iran to assassinate um, Netanyahu in Israel. Well, I, I saw the story. I'm not in the least bit surprised. I mean, we know that Netanyahu uh, is very kept very, very securely. Um, he sleeps in a, in, a, in a kind of bunker fortification. Um, and will the Iranian Secret Service try and get him? Yes, they absolutely will, but I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll succeed. Uh, everybody knows, most of all Hezbollah, Netanyahu now has not just the advantage, he has totally demoralized them. And the speech made by Hezbollah leader Nasrullah mm. yesterday was frankly pathetic. Yeah. He said, you know, this could be seen, could be seen as an act of war and one day he's not going to tell us when there will be revenge yeah so netanyahu's got a window of opportunity here and it is inconceivable to me that he won't use it a weak american president who can't uh, do anything meanwhile though the great problem is iran uh you, you know they may try and kill him well they've not succeeded 
will Iran stand by and let Netanyahu run through uh, Lebanon? And that would be a very serious situation if Iran decided to do something. But at the moment, Israel is absolutely on top of this, no doubt. Absolutely right. Good to talk to you. Professor Anthony Gleese, thank you very much indeed. Director of the Centre for Security and Intelligence Studies at the University of Buckingham.